All right, well, welcome to um, Austin Thompson, who's here for our lightning talk today for UC's first ever Healthcare Workforce Diversity Symposium. We appreciate your time today, Austin. Can we start with you just introducing yourself? Yeah, of course. So yeah, my name is Austin Thompson, like you said. Um, I'm from a few different cities. I'd say I'm from Cleveland, grew up there, and then I also lived in Atlanta for a while too. Um, I decided to go to college at the University of Cincinnati. Um, I graduated in 2019, and then uh, I just finished my first year of medical school at uh, University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. And so yeah, now I'm kind of in between the summer and I'm going into my second year in the fall. Great. Congratulations, Austin, on finishing your first year. I know that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, thanks. So our first question for you today is why did you decide to go into medicine? Yeah, so so when I answer this question, I think often it is kind of like you get the answer that I wanted to help people. And so the truth is, like I, you know, when I think about that answer, it's like there's many, many fields um, that can positively have an impact on others' lives. Um, so I definitely wanted a field in which I, you know, was meaningful for the lives of others as well as myself. Um, but also I kind of had a few other reasons to why medicine was that reason as opposed to choosing other things that I kind of was drawn to. So I kind of grew up in a household with a, a few reasons why I kind of grew up in a household with a father who was very successful in finance and my mom was a pharmacist. So, so, and the reality is at a young age, they just made it known that whatever I choose, I was going to do with excellence. So whatever that was. So they didn't really push me to go into medicine. But um, kind of as a person I was, I think I was around maybe ninth or 10th grade. I kind of sat back and was like, I kind of I figured I wanted to figure out the characteristic that I had. Um, and I wanted to figure out what characteristics certain um, careers had. And so what I did was I kind of went on Google after I kind of, and then I was like, okay, so what, what what careers can I be extroverted, extremely people oriented? Where can I take charge? Where can I make decisions? Where can I work with others? And a few other characteristics that I kind of see in myself. And for me, kind of when I was doing my research, like physician, just like that was like that perfect fit um, for me that just kept coming up over and over, over and over again in terms of kind of what really fit my personality. Um, and then also for me, I also love the, like the challenge of, of medicine. It's kind of cool, kind of when you think about, um, you know, a career that a very small percentage of people um, are willing to do. Um, it's kind of like um, the kind of challenge that's always on my shoulder that, yeah, I'm going to do it because no one else also wants to do it. So <laughs> that also kind of is like a, a neat part to the challenges. So I guess all those things together kind of made me want to kind of go in medicine. Great. Thanks. So what is a typical day like as a first year med student or now going into your second year? Yeah, so like so pre-COVID, um, <laughs> pre-COVID, a typical a typical day was like um, a weekday was you kind of wake up, um, you know, and then like about 720, get in the shower, get to class and I go to class from eight to twelve. Um, or you can stream from eight to twelve. I go to class from eight to twelve, and then what I would do is I go directly downstairs. We go to the R and R, which is kind of our place where we all kind of gather together. We eat lunch, or we go outside if it's a nice day. And then at about one o'clock is when they kind of hop in the library, and get back to work. So from about one to four, I typically go to the library. I'll study. Uh, then I'll take a break. I go to the gym from about four to five thirty, um, and then I kind of go home around then. And then I'll probably eat dinner and relax till about eight. And then I typically will go ahead and uh, I'll study again from eight to eleven thirty or eight to midnight. And then I always end my day with the hour of Netflix. <laughs> so so that's how I do my days, uh, my weekdays. Everybody's a little bit different. And then weekends look different. So weekends, if it's an off week, meaning um, you don't have a test that upcoming Monday. Um, if it's an off week, weekends a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you might you might get up in the morning at eight on a Saturday and study from eleven to like six. Same thing on, on Sunday. You might finish up studying around six or seven. If it's an on week, meaning there is a test that that following Monday, um, that means uh, you typically would I get up at eight, still go to the gym. Um, I'll get to the library about ten or eleven on a Saturday, and then I'll probably go to about eleven or midnight, and then I'll kind of go to church Sunday morning, um, come back from church, uh, eat food and all that, get to the library around, around 2.30, and then it'll probably be uh, go to like 10 or 11, and then I like to wake up, if it turns to 8 a.m., I like to wake up and kind of get to studying again by like 5.30, just to get everything fresh in my mind. And it always um, kind of gives me a few points, kind of going over everything the morning of. So that's kind of like how a typical day, day and a typical weekend day is kind of like for me. Wow, it's a lot of structure, it sounds like, and a lot of studying. <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome. Can you talk to us about um, what are some of the challenges that you face um, in medicine or that medicine faces? And then we'll talk about the opportunities. Yeah, so like, uh, I guess personally, kind of as you first get into medical school, one of the first things as a med student will face is kind of like you kind of hearing about that schedule is like the time management aspect of it. Um, so I guess it's like it's a really huge challenge trying to balance between um, there's only a certain amount of hours a day that you're awake. So you could feel like you could study all day because there's so much material. So you know, can you kind of have to remind yourself, okay, but you still need to take time for your personal health. You need to get to the gym. You need to eat right. Um, you need to have time to relax your brain and time to hang out with friends. So one of the biggest challenges that I, th I think most of my classmates and typically first med, med your students kind of have hard times with is time management. So I think that's uh, once, once you get that down, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Um, I think another challenge um, is because the high volume information is uh, learning how to learn. Um, and that that's like never like a, on there. Like so each different each different block, we were on a block system. So each different block that we kind of get to, it's like, a, OK, I study like this for MSK, but for the brain, I'm going to have to study differently. So like learning how to learn effectively and efficiently is super big. Um, so those are some some kind of challenges that like a med student might face, so especially my experience as a first year med student. Those are kind of some of the biggest challenges that, that I kind of have faced so far. Great. What about the opportunities that are available to you? What would you say reflecting on those in the first year? Yeah, so I think I think uh, the cool part about the opportunities, um, you get a lot of um, networking opportunities, which is really cool. Um, if you're especially if you're a people person, you can be around physicians a lot of time. A lot of your professors are physicians, and so you get super neat neat opportunities to even um, even become friends with a lot of these individuals. And so that leads to that leads to I mean. Uh, not only just learning more about them, but learning about the field and just kind of learning more about medicine. Um, and it's also a super unique opportunity to be in a position of uh, being a mentor. Um, so obviously you're never too you're never too young to kind of reach back to someone behind you. But um, I think specifically kind of once you get to uh, past that pre med, you kind of have this, uh, a gap between the numbers of like pre meds and the med students and then the even physicians. And so I think from there, it's like a really big opportunity for you to kind of reach back and mentor individuals and help out in any ways that you knew um, was able to help you kind of get to the level where you're at right now. So I think that's one of the, the best things, the best opportunities also that that I get as a, as a med student. Great. The next question I have for you is about identifying as underrepresented because that's mm -hmm. really been the emphasis of our healthcare workforce diversity symposium is increasing diversity in healthcare. So yeah. how do you identify, do you identify as upper, underrepresented in some way and in the field? What has that meant to you? How has it affected your experience? Yeah, for sure. Um, so obviously I'm a black male and in medicine we're severely underrepresented. Uh, there's been studies you can kind of go back and look at numbers back in 1970s um, and see similar um, similar numbers uh, of black male positions in the workforce back then as today. Um, so there's definitely um, a, a huge underrepresentation and it's kind of not growing too well. Um, and so you know, kind of you know, so with that on your shoulders, you kind of definitely face a few different things if you are going to go ahead and do uh, kind of go into this field. You're going to have to first of all, you have to be excellent. Um, and so you know. With that being said, if, you know, people don't see you a lot of times, uh, see people who look like, look like you a lot of times, they're going to think kind of you were granted this opportunity because of that minority status, right? And so it's one of those things where you kind of have to put in, like if someone's going one mile, you might have to go three miles. You just have to do that extra work because you have to be undeniably excellent to know, for, to let everyone know that you do belong and that you weren't just given a handout. Um, so that's one thing that's kind of you all always have to know. Um, and then also it's really important to know that like being one of a few, you have to realize that unfortunately the reality is you might represent the entirety of your race uh, and your gender at your specific place of place of healthcare action. So so that could be all that others might see. So I, you know, there might be three black males where I'm at, and that's could be everything the only black males anyone ever sees as a, as an investor or as a physician. And so people will base their entire reality of what a black male physician or black male med student is like based off one or two or three people. And so because of that, you always have to be on your, on your P's and Q's, always have to dot your I's and cross your T's. Um, and you have to be sharp um, because 
um, you have a, a lot more weight on your shoulders than just the weight of yourself. You're kind of carrying forth the weight. And a lot of times you're kind of, in a way, needing to protect the future of, of physicians and med students that are kind of coming up underneath you. Um, so it's a huge responsibility, um, but it's also a huge blessing to know that you are part of a change that you want to see. So, and we have a, lot, a long way to go in medicine, um, and we just got to keep continuing to reach back further and further to kind of propel these numbers forward. So, yeah. Great. Thanks. It's it's hard to hear that you have that much weight and pressure. Um, at the same time, I hear, I'm glad to also hear when you were talking about a typical day that you are getting in that self-care so that you can balance out that weight and pressure. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. In terms of diversity in the healthcare workforce, medicine, you know, and other healthcare fields, why do you think it's important? What is the impact yeah. of having more diversity? Yeah, so like the way I, I love to approach this outlook is kind of like instead of like kind of figuring out why I or why anyone else would think is important, I really kind of just look at like what do what is our, our goal in medicine, our goal in healthcare is is to care for the patient. And so there are studies that have shown that patient outcomes are better when oftentimes patient can interact with a physician who looks like themselves. And so the reason this is, is because often um, we are raised in environments around people who we're comfortable with. And so all of a sudden now, if you go to a physician's office and, and it's a, first of all, it's already a scary, a scary thing to go there. Um, you're already inclined to kind of withhold some information. And then you put on top of that, um, the fact that this individual may not have the best reason to historically trust the physician or his, or even the healthcare system as, as in general, they're often withholding information that is life-threatening. And, and so we can see better health outcomes if we can get the physician workforce and the healthcare workforce to look like the, the, the population that we represent. So for example, in the city of Cincinnati, we're around you know, African-American in specific, we're make up, I think it's around half half of the city's population. And so if you would kind of look at the physician workforce there, it doesn't represent um, those numbers at all. And those could those could largely be contributing to some health factors because with, with, with more physicians that look like these patients, the patients would be more comfortable um, being more open to the physicians and, and, and their healthcare providers. And this will lead to better healthcare outcomes. Great, thank you. So my last question, and then we do have Josh Nori here, who is the intern for the Healthcare Workforce Diversity Symposium and a pre-med um, sophomore student in health sciences. So he'll probably have a question for you, but uh, what is, if you had one piece of advice that you could give to undergraduate pre-meds, what would that be? Yeah, so my, my piece of advice, and uh, I stand by this, is uh, be excellent. So. Um, you know, when you're going through college, you're going to have a lot of times where you have people kind of, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things they are going to tell you what they think you should do. And so my advice is always just don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Um, stay in your lane, set goals and set your mark at excellence, pure excellence. You should be aiming for the best and nothing but the best. And don't ever waver from that. So, so like I said, if, there, if, if this means that you might need to stay up on a Friday night till 3 a.m. studying when everyone's at a party studying, then that's what it is. It's, it's, it's that simple. Um, so demand excellence from yourself and let nothing get in your way to, to achieve that excellence. And, but overall, I definitely also want to stress that the journey is a very long one that we're, or we're going to be on. And so, so definitely, like I like to say, work your face off, but, but definitely have fun and go out as much as you can. Make many friends as you can and enjoy the journey because it's going to be a long one and it should be enjoyable if, if you spend the time and you kind of um, you kind of meet these, you kind of meet great individuals who kind of go along this journey with you. And you can kind of look back and say, or even live in the moment, like, wow, this is hard. But, but I'm really becoming, I'm really becoming a person to be reckoned with. And you kind of, you kind of start to look in the mirror and be proud of kind of who you're, who you are creating in yourself. So that, that's kind of like the advice I give. That's great. I love that about, you know, not worrying about other people. I've always said your biggest competition is your best self, nobody else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then part about it being really a marathon, not a sprint in the journey is really important too. So thank you for that. Josh, do you have any questions for Austin before we wrap up? We have time for just about one question. You might have to unmute your mic.
think we may have lost Josh. <laughs> yeah, I think you may have also. Yeah. Well, we're right about at 15 minutes anyways, which is how we wanted to keep our lightning talk short so students will listen and engage. Thank you so much for your time, Austin. Best wishes uh, to you for next steps and um, look forward to seeing you continue to succeed in the future. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah.